Why do we suffer? It's a question as old as humanity itself. Pain, both physical and emotional, is a universal experience. It touches every life, but why? Is there a reason? Or is it, as some believe, simply a cruel twist of fate? The problem of pain and suffering is a deep and complex one. It's a question that has troubled philosophers and theologians for centuries. When we see innocent people suffering, it's hard to reconcile that with the idea of a loving God. If God is good, why is there so much pain in the world? If God is all-powerful, why doesn't he stop it? Perhaps there's a purpose to our pain. Perhaps it's through our suffering that we discover our strength, our resilience and our capacity for love. Clive Staples Lewis, better known as C.S. Lewis, was a man who understood the complexities of pain and suffering. Born in 1898 in Belfast, Ireland, Lewis lived through a time of great upheaval and change. He witnessed firsthand the horrors of war and experienced the deep, personal loss of his beloved wife, Joy Davidman. Despite these trials, Lewis remained a man of deep faith, and his experiences with pain and suffering only served to strengthen his belief in a loving God. Lewis was a prolific writer, best known for his fantasy novels, particularly the Chronicles of Narnia. His book, Mere Christianity, is considered a classic of Christian apologetics, and his work on the problem of pain, simply titled The Problem of Pain, offers a thought-provoking exploration of this universal human experience. In this video, we'll delve into Lewis's views on pain and suffering. The existence of suffering presents a profound challenge to the belief in a loving and all-powerful God. If God is truly good, why does he allow pain and suffering to exist? If he's all-powerful, why doesn't he intervene and stop it? The heart of the problem lies in the apparent contradiction between the nature of God and the reality of suffering. We believe in a God who is compassionate and merciful, yet we live in a world where pain and suffering are woven into the fabric of human experience. How do we reconcile these two seemingly opposing truths? The struggle to reconcile the existence of suffering with the belief in a loving God is not merely an intellectual exercise. When we are confronted with the pain and suffering in our own lives and in the world around us, it's natural to question our beliefs. Human suffering takes on many forms, each one leaving its own unique scar on the soul. There's the physical pain of illness, injury, and the natural process of aging, the emotional anguish of grief, loss, and broken relationships, the mental torment of anxiety, depression, and despair. We experience suffering on an individual level, grappling with our own personal trials and tribulations. But we also witness it on a grand scale, bombarded by news of natural disasters, wars, famines and acts of unspeakable cruelty. The sheer magnitude of suffering in the world can be overwhelming, leaving us feeling helpless and questioning the very meaning of life. A child is diagnosed with a terminal illness. A loving parent is killed in a senseless act of violence. The weight of human suffering can crush our spirits and leave us questioning everything we thought we knew about the world and our place in it. The encounter with suffering can trigger a profound crisis of faith, leading many to question the very foundations of their beliefs. The God who once seemed close and comforting can suddenly feel distant and indifferent. The promises of hope and redemption can ring hollow in the face of overwhelming pain and despair. Doubts creep in, whispering insidious questions in the silence of our hearts. If God is truly good, why is there so much suffering in the world? If he truly cares for us, why does he allow us to experience such pain? For some, the crisis of faith becomes a turning point. 
a catalyst for spiritual growth and a deeper understanding of God's love. However, for others, the encounter with suffering proves too much to bear. C.S. Lewis, in his seminal work, The Problem of Pain, doesn't shy away from the harsh realities of suffering. He acknowledges the rawness, the brutal unfairness of it all. But he also challenges us to look beyond the immediate agony and consider the possibility of a larger purpose. Lewis argues that pain, in all its forms, is an essential part of the human experience. It's the sharp, piercing alarm bell that alerts us to danger, to something being wrong. Without pain, we wouldn't know to pull our hand away from a burning stove or to seek medical attention for a persistent cough. Pain, Lewis posits, is the language that our bodies, our minds, and perhaps even our souls use to communicate with us. Consider for a moment a world utterly devoid of pain. Imagine a realm where physical discomfort is non-existent, where emotional wounds heal instantly, leaving no scars, no lingering ache. On the surface, such a world might appear utopian, a paradise free from suffering. But Lewis urges us to delve deeper, to examine the implications of such an existence. In a world without pain, wouldn't we lose a fundamental aspect of what it means to be human? One of Lewis's most powerful metaphors for pain is that of a megaphone, used by God to get our attention. He suggests that in the busyness of life, with its distractions and diversions, we often fail to notice the whispers of our conscience, the gentle nudges of the divine. Pain, in this context, becomes a necessary intrusion, a jarring wake-up call that forces us to stop, to listen, to pay attention to the deeper truths that we might otherwise ignore. Lewis isn't suggesting that God inflicts pain upon us as a form of punishment or a test of our faith. Rather, he proposes that God, in his infinite wisdom and love, allows us to experience pain as a means of drawing us closer to him. C.S. Lewis uses the analogy of a refiner's fire to illustrate how pain though excruciating, can lead to purification and growth. He reminds us that gold, in its raw, unrefined state, is riddled with impurities. It takes intense heat, the kind that melts and reshapes, to burn away the dross and reveal the precious metal beneath. Similarly, Lewis suggests that our characters, our spirits, can be clouded by selfishness, pride and fear. Pain, in its various forms, acts as that refiner's fire, burning away these impurities, revealing the stronger, more compassionate beings we're meant to be. This process, Lewis readily admits, is rarely comfortable. But it's in these moments of utter surrender, when we let go of our carefully constructed facades, that true transformation can occur. Pain, Lewis argues, has a unique ability to crack open our hearts, not just to our own suffering, but to the suffering of others. When we've experienced profound loss, faced our own mortality, or simply navigated the day-to-day -day struggles of life, we develop a deeper understanding of what it means to hurt, to grieve, to feel utterly alone. This newfound empathy, this ability to truly see and feel the pain of others has the power to transform us from self-absorbed individuals to compassionate human beings. It allows us to connect with others on a deeper level, to offer genuine comfort and support, and to build bridges of understanding across divides that once seemed insurmountable. It's in recognizing the shared humanity of suffering, the common thread that binds us all that we begin to see the world through different eyes. While pain is often associated with loss, grief, and despair, C.S. Lewis reminds us that it can also be a catalyst for unexpected gifts. He argues that suffering has the potential to awaken within us, a deeper appreciation for life, 
a heightened awareness of beauty and a profound sense of gratitude for the simplest of blessings. When we've stared death in the face, the mundane details of everyday life take on a new significance. A sunrise, a child's laughter, the warmth of the sun on our skin. These become precious reminders of the fragility and beauty of life. Pain can also ignite within us a fierce determination to live more fully, to embrace each moment with a renewed sense of purpose. Having confronted our own mortality, we're often less inclined to waste time on trivial pursuits or to allow fear to dictate our choices. At the heart of C.S. Lewis's philosophy on pain and suffering lies a profound paradox. The idea that true strength is found in surrender. This isn't the surrender of resignation, a passive acceptance of defeat in the face of overwhelming odds. It's a surrender of the ego, a relinquishing of our need to control, to understand, to have all the answers. Lewis argues that it's in our moments of deepest vulnerability, when we are stripped bare of our illusions of self-sufficiency, that we're finally able to open ourselves to a power greater than ourselves. It's in these moments when we acknowledge our own limitations that we create space for grace to enter our lives. Lewis challenges us to consider the possibility that true strength lies not in resisting pain, but in leaning into it, in allowing ourselves to be broken open by it. For C.S. Lewis, the experience of profound suffering, particularly the loss of his beloved wife, Joy Davidman, became a crucible in which his faith was both tested and refined. In the depths of his grief, he grappled with doubts, anger, and despair, questioning the very existence of a loving God who could allow such pain. Yet it was through this agonizing process, this wrestling with the silence of God, that Lewis emerged with a deeper, more nuanced understanding of faith. He came to realize the faith isn't the absence of doubt, but rather the courage to believe even in the face of doubt, to trust in God's goodness, even when we can't comprehend his ways. Lewis's journey reminds us that faith is not a static state, but rather a dynamic process, one that's often forged in the fires of suffering. It's in our darkest moments when we're forced to confront our own mortality, our own brokenness, that we are most likely to experience the transformative power of faith. The pivotal moment in C.S. Lewis's understanding of pain and suffering arrives when he recognizes that suffering, though never desired, can lead to profound personal transformation. It's often through our encounters with pain that our hearts are broken open, becoming more compassionate more empathetic, more attuned to the suffering of the world around us. This transformation requires active engagement with our pain, a willingness to confront our wounds, to sit with our grief, to allow ourselves to be changed by the experience. It's in the crucible of suffering that we develop the capacity for deeper love, greater understanding, and a more profound connection to the human experience. Lewis's insight reminds us that while pain is an inevitable part of life, suffering is optional. We can choose to allow it to transform us, to make us more compassionate, more empathetic, more fully human. C.S. Lewis doesn't offer easy answers to the problem of pain and suffering. He doesn't pretend to have all the answers to reveal the grand design. Lewis reminds us that we're not alone in our suffering. It's a universal experience connecting us to every human being. He encourages us to confront our pain with courage and curiosity. What if pain is not an enemy but a teacher? Lewis's insights challenge us to reframe our understanding of pain. What if, instead of asking why me, 
we begin to ask what now? What are your thoughts on the role of pain and suffering in our lives? Share your reflections in the comments below. And for further exploration of these themes, check out my video on Mention the Topic of Another Video.